Hey, I'm Mark. Welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to show the average Joe how to weld. We're going to be using a Lincoln AC weld machine. It's got a 20% duty cycle. It's not the top of the line. It's just a good weld machine for the average guy to have around the house or the farm to do some basics with. It's not going to be for high production. Uh, if you're looking for a high production weld machine, you want to go with a a DC reverse or a wire feeder or flux core or something. Uh, the three basic rods that we're going to be talking about today and using is the 6011. It's a good rod. It's a 332nd. It's a good rod for just your basic. What you see is what you get when you're welding with this rod. It produces a lot of splatter as its downfall. Um, and it's real easy to weld with. The next rod is a 6013. It's a little less splatter, uh, a little easier to weld with, and uh, it produces more flux though. It's a little bit harder to see what you're getting because it's kind of hidden in the flux. The uh, 60 on the welding rods, the first two digits represents the strength of the metal. Uh, 60 represents 60,000 pounds per square inch. The next rod is a 7014. It has a little iron powder in the uh, flux and when you're welding it will maintain the arc for you it has a little concaveness to it and when you're welding you can actually touch the metal and it will maintain that arc distance for you and you could actually just kind of drag it along as the uh, the rod eats away with the 6011 you're having to strike an arc and then maintain a gap as you move along at the right speed and then feed it into as the rod is used up. So you've got to have hands as steady as a surgeon to, to weld. Um, so uh, I'm going to hook up the camera to a uh, number 10 welding lens so you can actually see what, uh, what I'm seeing, what the welder's seeing, and you'll see the metal flowing and the flux. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of welds that we've already done. This is a well done with a 7014. It's nice, pretty, shiny weld and tight ripples. The downfall is, is that it can leave this worm tracks, what that's called, a hole. When you're welding, you don't see that. You just see the flux piling up and it gets in your line of vision. You don't know you have that until you chip it. It's not a big deal. You just simply come back and re-weld that spot. Uh, again, this rod's real easy for the average guy to try to learn with. This one's done with 6013 and uh, you kind of jack it in and out so you don't get the metal too hot you can see the little ripples nice pretty no undercut uh, the flux flakes off real easy this is done with a 6011 it's a lot of splatter it's hard you got to beat the flux off of it again what you see is what you get it's a good penetrating rod um, if you're going to be welding something thin you want to go with this 332nd rod and it's actually easier to set up vertical on really thin stuff and then go downhill with it as opposed to flat weld or trying to go uphill with it. So let's get the machine turned on and we're going to start with the 6011. Okay, so before we start, um, I've got a piece of tubing tacked a couple of spots. We're going to start on the uh, opposite side of the tack and weld to the tack. If you start at the tack and go away, what happens is you weaken that, that tack will liquefy and your piece, if it's under stress, will, will fall off and you can be in trouble. So you want to start away from your tack and move to it. Also, the metal will draw once it cools off, it will want to, once you have nice and square, one minute you weld it and it's going to be crooked. So that's why you want to put some tacks on it. And sometimes we'll take a scrap piece of metal if we're welding something that's bigger and you can tack it from another spot over to another to hold it in place while you're welding. So we're going to start with a 6013 on this first try. We're going to weld right across here and uh, let you look through the lens and see what we're seeing. This is a 6011. And it produces a little more splatter. What you see is what you get. We're running it on about 60 amps for this well. This flux, we're going to let it cool off a second, but it's, it's a little harder to chip off. But 
there's very there's very little flux on it. You can see the the weld, the ripples, and it's not undercut, and uh, the flux that's still there. Now we're going to go with the 6013. Jacking it back and forth so I don't blow through. Move out of the way, let it cool off, solidify it, and come back. And when you get to the end, you want to stop and back up where you just came. 6013, it the flux it chips off a whole lot easier. You can see. A little less flatter, a little easier to weld with. And next we'll go with the 7014. This is a 7014. You can see how the flux can kind of get in your way. Chip it and see what we got. That's probably the easiest of the rods to, to strike an arc and maintain if you don't have steady hands. And uh, 70,000 pounds a square inch. Uh, I appreciate y'all watching. And uh, stay tuned for our next video.